your head it is a pounding and your joints they hurt as well if the rash has central clearing it could be bore really all cause when the ticks go marching in my name is Sheldon Campbell and I'm from Yale School of Medicine in the VA Hospital in West Haven, Connecticut. I teach the second year course in Microbiology and Infectious Disease, which is a course where we try and take the students all the way through most of the microbes that are important in human disease. If you look into your red cells, this creature may be seen. But Babesia can be handled as long as you've got your spleen. Cause when the ticks. I love American and British traditional music, so most of my songs are old folk songs adapted for this use, which means they've got very singable choruses, and the medical students can sing along and learn some, some microbiology. And I kind of use this instead of a summary slide. I think it's a much more effective thing than a slide listing the, the teaching points, a, a song with the teaching points all in it. And I kind of use one song for every block of lectures I give on every major topic. So I have a song about fungi and one about um, tick-borne infectious diseases, a song that I use at the end of the course to kind of review all of microbiology in eight minutes, um, a song about tuberculosis. And so one day I was thinking about my parasitology lectures and I sang. Oh, give me a home where the parasites roam, where the worms play in cheerful delight. Where the ova are shed and the larvae are bred and the pinworms crawl out in the night. And um, I had a song about parasitic worms. My students kind of kind of end up, end up liking this. They start out rolling their eyes, but um, end up really liking it. And they do sing along and have a good time with the, the songs in class. I'm not sure I can, can uh, scientifically prove that there's an improvement in school performance from the music. Um, it's hard to do the controlled experiment. If I did the songs one year and then didn't do it the next year, I might get in trouble with the class that didn't get the songs. Um, but they do mention the songs in their course evaluations. And every so often I have a third or fourth year student come up to me and say, you know, I remember your songs and I remember how to treat Lyme disease because it's mentioned in the chorus of your song about Lyme disease. So I think that at least is evidence that um, th these are effective teaching tools. For Lyme, it's F-triaxone, ampicillin, doxycycline, for rickettsia and ehrlichia, treat them with doxycycline. <laughs> I got interested in microbiology when I was doing my PhD work. I did an MD-PhD and I worked on gene regulation in the rat mammary gland. I was going to be a cancer researcher like everybody else. Um, but I went to a cell biology meeting and wandered almost by accident into a session on the African trypanosome, which is just an amazing creature. Um, and from that moment I knew I was going to work on microbes because they're, they're such astonishing um, and amazing um, organisms. Home, home in the lab Where the viruses proliferate Where fungi abound And worms can be found And bacteria grow on a plate what I'd really like people to take away from my music is um, bringing something of yourself to your teaching. Not just teaching the material, but teaching yourself. Te bringing your life experiences and your passions into your teaching. Um, I think that is essential. I ha I've had the pleasure of having the, the real um, honor of having um, teachers who, in my department, did that. Uh, Marie Landry tells stories about her children getting viral illnesses when she gives her virology lectures. And so I think that when you bring something of your own life into your teaching, um, it empowers your teaching and, and makes it more engaging. What should we do with the infected patient? What should we do with the infected patient? 
What should we do with the infected patient? Early in the morning, gram ho, culture and stain them, gram ho, probe and test them, gram ho, how to treat them early in the morning. Pee in a cup, but don't gram stain it, play it with a loop overnight, retain it, tin to the fourth or fifth, explain it, look for that E. coli, gram ho, culture and stain them, gram ho, probe and test them, gram ho, how to treat them early in the morning. Fever spike and a bottle of blood makes CO2 from the growing crud. Every man and woman hears a micro stud early in the morning. Gram ho, culture and stain them. Gram ho, probe and test them. Gram ho, how to treat them early in the morning. <laughs> Yay. That? Thank you.